I just matched with my dead wife on Tinder. There was no writing, but three other pictures of my dead wife I'd never seen before. I couldn't hear or see anything, but I could sense someone out there on the other side of the door. I'm outside. Let me in, please. Never mind. I got in. Oh, I don't like that. <laughs> that is gross. Grim, grim, grim. I heard the front door of my house close and I tightened up in my bed. What? what? <laughs> I didn't like that either. You tightened up what? <laughs> You're on Tinder too soon, Derry. You were supposed to warn me, not try to fuck 23-year-olds on Tinder. Oh, is that what his age range is set at? Until a couple of nights ago, after I came back from a date with a 26-year-old I met off Tinder. Derry, for fuck's Derry, sake! Fuck Will you never learn? <laughs> Welcome to episode 14 of Ghost Hunt. We didn't plan that at all, but that was much better than when we try and do it at the same time. We're so in sync. We're so in sync. Have We're you just so finished your period? Uh, no. Oh. I finished it about four days ago. Yeah, me too. Stop <gasps> it! Yeah. We're synced! Yeah, we are synced. We're synced. I knew it. I knew We're synced. Uh, before we get going, yeah. I know that we, we get very hungry doing this, but I'm, mm. I'm starving, so I bought some snacks. Um, oh my God, you got fruits! Yeah, you remember my... Uh, oh my God, you're... Pepperamis. Oh, you little... Stuff. And two strings. <gasps> Fuck my life, Hannah. What a ch what a child's uh, Bonnie, do you want a fruit? Uh, yeah, go on. What flavour do you want? Do you want strawberry, red berry, or peach? I'm sorry, but uh, this uh, isn't. Oh, I'll have peach. You are a fucking you are a psychopath, but I so love that because I fucking hate peach. <laughs> oh really? Peach is ming, but the, if what are the other flavours? Red berry and strawberry. Strawberry. strawberry yeah, they're strawberry. obviously the better ones. Yeah. Okay, hang on. Let me just. Although I don't think I can eat a fruit very um, nicely, okay. especially you for want these. recording what? the Bonnie, pod. Bonnie, you can have two of those. One, oh. two, Oi. excellent catches. If you didn't okay. see that, expertly. food for you. Do you want a strawberry? I'll there have a straw. Um, so I'm just probably going to munch on these while you tell when you do your bit because I am starving. Okay, how have all you right. been? Um, I've been all right. Yeah, well, uh, which is good. Weird, isn't it? It's very nice being healthy. I've I got a bit. To... I've got a bit of a cough. Oh, but no. not like I, it. It feels like it's the tail end, but I'm not like. I'm not coughing all the time, which is nice. Okay, so uh, do you think today is when you hand me whatever you yeah. you've got? Yeah, because I feel no, I feel great now. I feel great, <sighs> more fr thrilled. Shave my entire body. I'm like a seal. <laughs> you know how good you feel when you've done that. You, you shave know, everywhere. Nice feel, well, not like my eyes, but yeah. But your. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, mom. <laughs> he listens every single week. <laughs> I, uh, I shave my entire. You know, you just feel clean. Yeah, yeah. I'm, look, I'm a feminist. If you don't want to shave, don't shave. It just makes no odds to me. Mm. All respects, but I just feel, I just feel, sm I just like it. It makes you quicker in a swimming pool. It, yeah, it makes, yeah, it makes me very aerodynamic, which yeah. is my aim. As we yeah. all know, I'm training. Hannah the, Aerodynamic the, Bishkovsky. Yeah, that's what they call me, baby. Mm, what they call me. Um, How well, have you been? What have you been doing? I've been good. I've been just been gigging, uh, getting ready for my shows. <gasps> Which How's that going? Start in two weeks. Mm. Uh, not well, I'll be honest. Uh, no, it's fine. Uh, although the people that come to the very first work in progress are going to be in for quite the treat because it's going to be shit. When is the first work in progress? Fifth of March, Ooh. and we are sold out. <gasps> That's exciting. Sold out for the first few shows, which is it is exciting. Uh, I fear that everyone's going to leave and be like, "What a fucking stupid bitch." No. Uh, no, I think it'll be. Are fine. you doing a full hour? Mm, yeah. Yeah, great. <laughs> Look, it's it's great. It is. It's going very very well. Everything's fine. Everything's lovely. Everything's we're doing good. a um, split show. If you guys, um, you'll probably be listening to this a week before we're going to do our show together. Yeah. So we're doing a show on the seventh of March at Streatham Space Project in London. In London, because um, we have listeners all over the world. Yeah. Which, quite frankly, I'm shocked about. Japan, Mexico, Japan. We've got them all. We've got them everywhere. Puerto, Puerto Rico. Rico. Oh Aww. my god. So synced. Um, oh, why am I doing that? It's like she's taken over my body. <laughs> my body. My body. Um, so I was thinking to kick off this episode, um, I would like you to pick at random oh, a tarot card to give the vibe of the show. That is so exciting. Yeah. What, so I just delve in? <clears throat> yeah. Oh, God, I hope this is good. <gasps> what is it? It's another carrot. No, it's not. It's, um... it's a stick or whatever. No, he's holding a stick, but it's seven of um, pentacles. Could you look at that? Pentacles. Up, Pentacles, pentagons. 
Yeah, it's like stars in the bush. Stop even. Stop, why are you moving away from the fact that you just called them pentacles? Well, oh, no, it is, pen, it is, is pentacles. It? So the seven of coins or the are seven you of pentacles, which is a disgusting word. I thought is, it, yeah, it is. I thought it was a, pan, a pentagon. Pentacle. Pentagon is a shape, isn't it? Well, so is that. Everything's a shape if you think about it too much. <laughs> uh, so it's a card which, when upright, means to show your commitment towards your work, life or dreams. Fuck off! That I've got goosebumps. It's insane. I've got goosebumps. Um, we've Look just, at them! We've just literally committed to doing this podcast and talking that about your show. That is shows. so crazy. Fuck me. Jesus All right, well, well listen, we'll, well put that Well, that's a good lad, sign, isn't it? We'll put him there and you okay. can um, set the tone. Um, absolutely lovely. Should I kick off with a story? Let's do it, because I want a froob. Yeah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> You don't want to be scared, you just want to play. Asthma. Asthma. Mmm. Foley, remember? That's a nice noise. Oh, by the way, you can fuck off the ending of last last week. <laughs> I'm still absolutely <laughs> fuming. <laughs> and I will get my revenge. <laughs> in this life or the next. Oh. Um, okay, would you like... I've got, I'm going to give you a choice. Okay, so uh, one of our listeners wrote in. Which is very nice. A lady called Abby. And she recommended a story. Um, and that story is called I Matched With My Dead Wife on Tinder. So would you like Abby's recommended story? Yeah, let's do Abby's recommended story. Should we do that? Should we do it? Okay. It was that or a haunting in Hampshire. But I could do both. Before we begin. Yeah. Did we have an, did we have an email from a certain person? Oh, yeah, we can we we'll do that later. Those. We could do those at the end, maybe. What, what we should do is add another segment of emails. Yeah correspondence mm. this is a story that um i'd be recommended let's get to it it's called i just matched with my dead wife on tinder you got a question but no i'm just gonna say this is really up my street and i'm <laughs> yeah. really excited about it, it is up your strasser i had numbly swiped left so many times in a row i almost missed it i wish i had my wife allison has been dead for two full years Yet there she was, on Tinder, smiling at me, in a photo I'd never seen. Cheating bitch. Yeah. She's had that account for fucking I, I, ages. Guess what it says next? Looking older than she did when she passed. Oh, but I by the way, if I die, way. can you do... Can, not, that I, not that I am on Tinder, Adam, my boyfriend. I'm not, from <laughs> But uh, I'm going to give you a list of things I want you to get rid of when I die. Yeah. You What, what you want me to put you on Tinder? <laughs> No, absolutely do not that. put me on Tinder. Actually, that'd be quite funny. <laughs> I'm going to put you on Tinder when you drown in the water. Um, oh, no, morbid. I don't want you to do that. Mm. Okay. All of the air went out the room. I skimmed through the rest of her profile. There was no writing, but three other pictures of my dead wife I'd never seen before, including one with a Statue of Liberty behind her, even though I knew she'd never been to New York City, at least to my knowledge. I swiped right and breathed for the first time in nearly two minutes. I struggled to sleep for the next 48 hours, never getting a match, ready to message Tinder and tell them someone was impersonating my beloved dead wife on their app and doing some kind of magical Photoshop to put in her pictures. A Tinder won't give a fuck existed. about that. They'll be like, we don't care, go away. Yeah, Please leave us alone. Yeah, also, do you think that, uh, I would think that this is uh, like, you know, on the Darwin canoe situation? Darwin canoe? And they pretended to die to get loads of money. Did he? Yeah, you're not heard about that. No. What was it called? Was it called Charles? I, I, he's not called Charles Darwin. He is Charles gonna... Darwin. What the? No, guy? no. no, yeah. <laughs> no. This is a this is a man in like 2008 who or whatever year it was who um him, him and his what was it his what no John Darwin John Darwin well, fucking close isn't it John Darwin basically pretended to die and then he actually just was he just drive off in a can drive off in a canoe sail off in a little canoe and then oh he tried he pretended to die in a canoe accident. Is that right? Yeah, he, um, he faked oh, he his faked death in a canoe accident. That's and it, yeah. up five years later. I think there's been a film or series. He like faked, he like he lied to his ah. son and every everything. And he lived in the house, in his house with his wife. His, his children, they had like funeral and grieved for him and everything. He was just still living in the house. Jesus Christ. How much did he hate his life? Like what? Well, he just wanted loads of money. Oh. I think his wife was in on it, wasn't she? I want to call her Anna. Maybe I've made that up. I'll, we'll figure that His out. His wife right. was called Anne, yeah. Oh, smashed it. And um, um, Anna's are always myself. in on it, aren't they? Always, yeah. Sorry, anyway, Cam, that's what <laughs> I would think at this point. Oh, right. So faked her own death and yeah, then like, back on it. Yeah, like, you fucking bitch. Yeah, okay, yeah. The match came at 3.33am, lighting up my phone. I was already awake. The match came with a message, just a simple, hi. The absolute worst in any situation, let alone this one. So true. 
I mashed the letters on my phone as hard and as fast as I could. Who is this? Why are you doing this? And where did you get these pictures of my wife? She died of cervical cancer two years ago, you monster. Oh, that's so dark. I had to wait for another 24 hours before I got an answer. It came in the middle of the night again. Derek, I miss you. Mm. I'm sorry for what happened. That was it. Sorry for what happened? She died of natural causes she in no way could have controlled. And was I supposed to believe that my dead wife's spirit decided to inhabit a Tinder profile and hit me up on it? I got another message as these thoughts ran through my head. Are you home? What? What the fuck? I got another answer before I could form my own. I'm outside. My blood ran cold. Oh. Something rattled in the darkness of my kitchen and I jumped up and readied myself in bed and then realised it was just the ice dropping in the ice maker in the freezer. Sorry? Is that is that something that happens? Yeah. On its own? Yeah, you know, when it's creating uh, ice overnight. Oh, one of those fucking like, big <laughs> fridges. <laughs> wow. Foley. Right. We're, we're foleying now. Foley. <laughs> Another message. Holy shit. Let me in, please. <laughs> fuck, 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 no. fuck. <laughs> How about no? <laughs> what? Someone had to be fucking about with me, but... Who would be this impossibly cruel and diabolical? There may have been a couple of people who didn't like me at work, but no one would go anywhere near this far. Another message. Never mind, no more time for thought, just reading. Never mind. I got in. Oh! I don't like that! <laughs> that is gross! Grim, grim, grim. I heard the front door of my house close. And I tightened up in my bed. What? Well, I didn't like that either. You tightened up what? A bumhole. But a lot of bumhole talk we today. We do love to talk about your bumhole does tighten though, don't it? When you're scared, mm. ah, sphincter closing. Or just completely loosens your shit yeah. yourself. Fight or flight, but with the butt. <laughs> fight or flight, with that's so true. Yeah. Fight or shite. Fight or shite. Very shite. good, Barney. Yeah. Um, we'll swap you in for Susie, Barney. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That could be the title of the episode. Um, Flight or shite. (laughs) I heard the front door of my house close and I tightened up in my bed. I started to write back. Why? I'm a dumbass. I don't know. Another message rang in before I could shoot mine off. Rang in? What? Excuse me? What are you shooting off? (laughs) Derek? Derek, stop wanking and focus on the situation. He's just shooting off in bed at 3.30 I'm just trying to shoot off (laughs) in you. (laughs) It's like, who the fuck's in my kitchen getting some ice? I'm shooting off. <laughs> he needs to put his dick on ice, doesn't he? What a great. Like, um, great. Jay- <laughs> I'm shooting off. Um, You know that bit in, uh, you know, Beyonce sings, cigars on ice, cigars on ice. That means putting oh, your yeah. dick on ice. <laughs> what do you mean? Hello? Oh, you mean, <laughs> is this thing on? Is this thing on? Um, what do you mean? You know, she sings in Drunk in Love. She goes, cigars on ice, cigars on ice. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah. I'm thinking about it. Right, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what do you think that means? I, d- I don't. I d- to be honest, I really like Beyonce. I like a lot of songs, but none of them make any sense to me. Cigars on ice. Cigar. Barney, c- what? Um, appa- according to the Urban Dictionary, it's a man taking a cold shower to, like, stop his burn. Yeah. Oh, so, that's c- what this guy needs on to ice. do. That's what I'm saying. Cigal. Cigar. Cigars. Cigars Cigar- on ice. Oh, cigars. Cigars on ice. Okay, that makes a bit more sense. Uh, 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 uh. That okay. Really disturbing. <laughs> shoot mine off. Okay. Um, another message rang in before I could shoot mine off. You're on Tinder too soon, Derry. How long has it been? Two years since she died. I think that's fine. The pet name only the two of us use between each other, Derry. The logistics of who knew that name flashed through my head as I heard footsteps approach my unlocked bedroom door. Then the footsteps stopped right outside. Foley. <laughs> so good. <laughs> they were accompanied by a fresh message in my inbox. Ding. You were supposed to mourn me, not try to fuck 23-year-olds on Tinder. Oh, is that what his age range is set at? Yeah. How old is he? Well, I'm going to say 42. <clears throat> uh, he's got to be in his 40s because nobody, like, well, he's got to be older than that. He's got to be in his 30s to 40s. That is a bit icky, isn't it? Yes, ick. I now get it. 23 to 24. That's oh my god, I realised right there that it was even following Alison's quirk to impeccably punctuate any kind of message, even if it didn't matter. Putting the dashes into the 23-year-old. 
I spoke finally. Alison, I'm sorry. I love you. I miss you. I've been sick to my stomach for two years, but I had to move on. Yeah, you're fucking dead. Yeah, she's dead. I threw up most mornings for almost a year. I was wrecked. I couldn't work. I couldn't do anything, but I'm finally starting to put it together. I pleaded into the wood of my bedroom door. <laughs> and the wood of your cock. <laughs> 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 you dirty bastard. Stop shooting off. Why Stop we... shooting off, Derry. <laughs> put your cigar away. Put it on ice. Put it on ice, you dirty fucker. My throat went dry. I couldn't speak anymore, too choked up, just like I'd been when I tried to give Alison's eulogy. I'm fucking sorry. (laughs) Everything hurts. Every day. You're my only love. (laughs) Forever. That sounds like he's he's finishing off his words. (laughs) I barely got the words out. I couldn't hear or see anything, but I could sense someone out there on the other side of the door. Then, I couldn't. Then I heard footsteps walk away. Oh. That was fucking brilliant. Thank you. Honestly, pro. I thought. Then I heard my door close again. I checked the app. I had a message waiting for me. Okay. Goodbye. XO. I felt like my spine tried to climb out of my body. My entire being went numb. I couldn't feel anything other than an odd, disconnected pain. It was her. I walked out to the front door and looked outside. There were no signs of life. I went back to my phone in in the bedroom. Alison's profile had been deleted. I felt okay. Until a couple of nights ago, after I came back from a date with a 26-year-old I met off Tinder. Jerry, for fuck's sake! Will you never learn? (laughs) I need a froob. This is stressing me out. (laughs) With a hard, (laughs) hard froob. You have to shake him so the water doesn't come out of the top because that's minging. That's absolutely... <laughs> what are you doing there? Something out of my froob! <laughs> She's frotting her froob. Oh, no, that's not frotting. We'll come well, to we'll that Well, we'll come later. to that, yeah. Um, so he's he's basically trying to cop off with a load of 20-year-olds. This is so... But he's learned no less. No, it's bad that he did it in the first place, but then to have literally the ghost of your dead wife come and be like, can you stop being a fucking misogynistic little prick, please? Can you stop being a massive And then he's like, though? yeah, sorry. Whilst he's having a wank, shouting out apologies yeah. as he's shooting off. Yeah. And then goes out on a date. Oh, like three years, that's better. 20, Derry, Derry's not coping well, is he? What's his real name? Do we know? Derek. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I came home tipsy after a few drinks and a make-out session in my car. I was on a high. I'm sorry. Are you fucking 70? Yeah, he's obviously reverted back to his, like... Fuck off, Derek. High school jock face. I checked the app to see photos of the girl whose tongue had just been in my mouth and noticed that I had a new like. He's fucking minging. I hate Derek so much. I hope he fucking dies. I would haunt the fuck out of oh, Derek. I would, I would mess around I'd with come back. So yeah, much. you would, wouldn't you? Yeah. I had a new like. I had my account on premium. Of course he fucking does. I'm sorry, but if you pay Spenny for Tinder, busted. you're a fucking minger. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Unless you're a listener, then that's great. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck and I hope you find love. Good investment. <laughs> 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 Mm. What? Uh, our audience must hate us, mm. <laughs> surely. I had my account on premium so I could see who it was. It was Alison again, but with the same profile. She was only one mile away. I swipe right. Let's see where it goes. Da, da, da. Is that it? The end. Oh. Um, it's actually a four-part series, but we don't have time and maybe I could do another one another day. Oh my God, do we have to finish these? For the next <clears throat> however many weeks, you are doing them. Shall I? Mm. Do you want one now? No, should we wait? Well, <clears throat> shall we see how we go? We've got enough time at the end, because that was pretty short. But I've also got Haunting in Hampshire and my incredible bendable son. <laughs> well, we're gonna be do- we're gonna be doing this for the rest of our <laughs> lives, so they will come out at some point. Okay. I would like do you want I need to hear the rest of Alison and Derek's story, if I'm I, honest. I quite for like, like the next however many weeks. I quite like the idea of yeah, keep that running for like Yeah. Keep it running? Yeah. Mm. All right, part two next week. Um <clears throat> And then after you've listened to that next week, you'll be coming to our show because it's on a Tuesday. And that's when our episode. Very out. good. Do the third part at your show. Ooh, that's such a good idea. Well, yeah, but half I've the only... audience can be like, <laughs> never fucking heard of Ghost Talks. And also, yeah, we don't care about your podcast. We don't care just make us podcast. laugh. Yeah. Um, well, that was a that was a great shout. Thank you, Abby. That well, maybe was... by the time the fourth part's out, we'll be doing a live show. That is true. A live podcast. So we could now, do um, just to a, a quick word on frotting um 
So I've, I've used that word before when Hannah was sort of what I said was uh, frotting herself. It was in the listen. It was in the listener tales. Cast your minds back. Yeah, and uh, I'm so hungry. I've been corrected by a listener called um, Steve. All right, thanks. <laughs> Sorry, I'm starving. Carry on, yeah. Um, Steve wrote in and said, <laughs> which is just I think one of the best emails I've ever read. Hi, Susie and Hannah. I just wanted to share a little knowledge with you both. In your listener story special episode, when Hannah is wanking, you refer to her frotting herself. This made me chuckle so much. Can we, just a side note, mm. I was never actually wanking. I was never actually No, you were off. just um, really rubbing yourself with a wire. Um, he said, this yeah. made me chuckle so much. Frotting has a few meanings and would require Hannah to have a penis that she rubs against another penis or unsuspecting people and or random objects. In brackets, I don't want to misgender, so apologies if Hannah actually has a penis. Thank you, Stephen. Steve Thank great. you, Steve. And then he said, um, below is the link for the Urban Dictionary for referencing. Happy frotting. P.S. You guys are great. Love your pod. So uh, that's very nice. So uh, I, you know what? I'm I'm here to learn. Read me the uh, read me that meaning, baby. Uh, so I, I clicked on it and it says frotting, rubbing slash holding slash masturbating two penises together for sexual pleasure. So <clears throat> I mean it so goes on, but yeah, essentially so it's, it's two um, it's two peni in one hand. Yeah. Oh, is it? Mm. Like that. Like just. Jesus, how big are those? <laughs> Bloody hell. <laughs> She's lived a life. I, do you know what really scares me about this podcast is that it's out there in the world for here and my nan just clicks on a few buttons. She can hear it. <laughs> Absolutely terrible. I don't know why I'm still doing We them. are trashy as fuck. Oh, we're disgusting. Um, yeah, mean. objects. That was, that's, a, that's a weird And I've got another, it. actually, another one to read out. Basically, um, we've got another email in from a lad called Matthew. And this is a re this is a really weird one. He um the subject line was we've been haunted because of your podcast. Oh, which is mad. it says here um <clears throat> the same night that we listened to the Edinburgh story with the weird hotel with the lights that would turn on and off. Mm. The hallway light in the apartment my wife and I live in wouldn't go on. We have a string of fairy lights hanging over the door frame from Christmas 2021 that we now use year round. So I assumed the bulb of the main lamp had died. And was more than anything annoyed that I'd have to replace it at some point. The ceilings are very high, so I was going to have to build a whole contraption of a desk plus step stool plus another step stool to get to it. Naturally, I decided to do this another day since we have the fairy lights anyway. A few hours later, I got into bed. My wife was already asleep. <coughs> Sorry. Um, uh, my wife was already asleep and the apartment was quiet. As I was falling asleep, the hallway light turned back on inexplicably. I got up and shut it off at the end. That is fucking scary. Listen to... Oh, my God. Thank you for emailing us. And Abby, thank you so much for sending that story in because I fucking love it. I know. It's so good. I think it's great. So, Not Abby's story, though, because that'd be mad. But the story that but you But I do think that... Um, we are haunting people, or at least we're getting something's haunted. happening because we're always there's always something a bit wrong. I don't I can't remember what it feels like to be fully well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh. So, Okay, that's oh just no, a, we're getting haunted. That's again. a chainsaw. <laughs> oh <my laughs> it sounds God. like a chainsaw. Can you imagine if Mike Myers just came in now and fucking Bonnie, is that door locked? Yeah. Can we We can it? live in this pod for a while. Yeah. We've got, we actually can. We've got a couple of pepperoni. So much left. coffee. So <laughs> much coffee and pepperoni. Um Okay, do you want to hear some tube stories? Yes, I really do. So these actually aren't very funny. <laughs> these are like these are really, really creepy. I should say that it's from a I've got all these from a documentary called uh, Ghost on the Underground, which is an amazing documentary, but which of you, I suppose you won't need to. Um, a cheese string whilst you're going. Uh, no, carry on. So what did I tell you last week? I told you about the man with the overalls. Did I tell about that on this podcast? How do I eat a cheese string? Uh, well, I never pull the cheese string because I don't think it's substantial enough. I bite it. Do you? Like yeah. that? Yeah. Have you never eaten a cheese string before? No, I have. I just don't like that bit. Carry on. What, what bit? No, just carry on. I don't like eating it like so that. So why? Okay. <laughs> You're such a fucking child. <laughs> I don't like it. Don't Stop like it. it. Um, I don't think that's substantial enough at all. Okay. Um, <laughs> anyway. So I told you about the man with the overall, uh, overalls. I told you about the man with the overalls and I told you about the woman, uh, well, the the the, 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 tr the interconnecting trait. Okay, fine. Um, so... So, okay, so another tale on the underground. This one takes place at Bank Station, which is incidentally one of the oldest uh, networks on. The thing with the ch the thing with the underground is that there are so many like old crypts it like <laughs> underground with bodies in 
that have either been excavated, well, but loads are still down there. Mm. So it's a really creepy, it is, it is a, it's like you said last time, is that it's one of those places where if you're there with loads of people, mm. it's it's fine. But if you're on, you know, like a, late at night when you're getting like one of the last tubes. Also, bank is a fucking nightmare. Bank is a nightmare, yeah. And like, it's like, oh my God, have you ever walked from bank to monument? Oh, oh, oh. fuck that. It takes about 15 minutes. Yeah, it's a haunting. Yeah, bank's a nightmare. So anyway. It's this guy who used to work at Bank Station. Um, and he worked there for like 35 years. And this, this happened in 1983. Um, he used to work the night shift. So when the last, tra- last train had left, left Bank Station, he then started locking up the station. And like part of his job is to go around and check that like there's no one around. There's no one getting locked in the station. Like that film creep that we were talking about last mm. time. Um, and just to make sure that everything's kind of shut down, locked up, ready to go. And he would just stay there all night monitoring everything. So he went, and this is in 1983. So everything's a little bit different, obviously, to how it is now. But he went to check the lifts, right? And to make sure there was nobody, there, there was nobody in there. So, and the lifts were like, had old wooden doors that like closed shut. So they are a little bit different. So we went into the lift on one of the grounds to check, he like popped his head in, went in to make sure nothing, everything was fine, everything was working okay. So he went back out, closed the wooden door, locked it. As he was walking away, he hears. Oh, that's fucking horrible. Coming from inside the lift. How fucking scary that's is that? That's horrible. Like, there's nothing to explain that. So wait, he'd gone into the lift to check. Yeah. Shut it back up and bolted it, and then he hears a knocking from within the lift. Yeah. <gasps> Can you believe? Oh, God. So then he went into the... So then he kind of... He, he opened the thing again, checked, there was nothing there. Then he goes into, like, the... You know the... I suppose it's called, like, the... the you, know, you know, just, like, the office. The general office where everybody mm. is. So he went in, and where's the door open? As he does every night. Uh, and when he went in, he switched all the lights off to leave again as he walked out the door just slammed like proper slammed you know like when you can tell when a door is closed on its own yeah, or whether yeah, it's needed yeah. some force yeah and it just went like that oh god uh, and he never worked there again because he said he was that petrified like the whole ordeal was that terrifying and never worked in that station again <sighs> bank station used to be the end so the bank station entrance used to be the entrance to an adjacent church crypt where the and the dead were excavated in 1900 Wow. And the ticket office in Bank Station is where the crypt was. Oh, really? <clears throat> How fucking scary is that? I know. Isn't that fucking creepy? That's really creepy. <gasps> Do you want another? Yeah, of course. I want loads of these. I know, they're good, aren't they? They're like, ooh, scary. Um, I've got I've got two more little ones. The, but the last one is pretty mad, to be okay, honest. Okay, go on. Um, so this one, uh, there's a guy called Barry who's working overnight shift in Hyde Park. And this was in Hyde Park Corner. And this was in 1978. And I have to say that a lot of these stories do happen in oldie times, which makes me a little bit cynical mm. because... Things just were a bit shit then, weren't they? Like everything was a bit. What you see, you're more cynical of an older story. I'm just, just more cynical things of things could've... happening back then because there's less, there's more things that can go wrong with things, like banging, crashing. Yeah, to do with like, dodgy like yeah, wiring. like a, like a lift isn't as, like a wooden lift door isn't as well <clears throat> built, I suppose, as the ones that are now. Okay, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't, I don't know, but we we do say that we're very cynical of things. So I don't, well, and I, I like being scared. I want them to be real, but I'm trying very you think hard. That maybe like a little I'm just chimney trying to sweep remove... could have got like stuck in the Who the knows? wiring and Who knows? trying dead. to get out. Yeah, now dead. Now dead. Uh, R.I.P. Um, so this one, uh, basically, again, it, they all happen at night time. Shut the station down. Check that all the check that all the machines were off. Every, so like things like the escalators, the lift, whatever. Um, and the escalators have it have like well they used to have a. a like a, it was a mechanism that basically, if once you shut it off, it couldn't be turned back around because it took quite a lot of force to do it. Mm-hmm. So when he turned the mechanism off for the escalators, that's it. They're always they're always done. Anyway, later on that night, he was walking. He went up to do his rounds, and as he was walking past the escalator, one of them was just going up and round and up oh. and just going on its own, which is pretty creepy in itself. Um, so and he was with his colleague as well. What who year was is like, this? This was in 1978. Okay, so. Um, he just felt, he said he felt like something was a bit weird. Everything was really cold, like where you could see your breath. And I always think that's a bit weird 
because you're like things can be cold and you can feel a bit cold when you can see your fucking breath. And they always say anytime there's been like a haunting or if anyone's yeah. like spooked, the, the temperature. Why does it always plummet? But that yeah, but that's that's always a bit that also makes me a little bit cynical because it's a bit of herd mentality, isn't it? It's like oh right, well mm. that's it then. It's got to be cold. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, so he was with his colleague and he turned around mm. and saw his colleague had pressed himself up against the wall, unblinking, looking absolutely terrified. And he went over and. This bloke was just stunned. He like wouldn't do anything. He was getting really worried. It took him like five minutes to bring him round. So he was just he was just pressed up against the wall, Jeez, eyes what wide. What did he see? And he went, "Did you see the face?" <gasps> Fuck off! And the bloke said he didn't see anything, but apparently he saw his his Barry's colleague had seen uh, had just seen a face appear by the escalators, and like a terror. And he never went back to that. He never just went back a to floating the face. Yeah, and he never went back to the station again. And it's Barry who's seen this? No, it's Barry's friend. Barry's, Barry's colleague. So Barry hadn't seen it. But he had He had said that the escalator started moving and there was like a weird... I just feeling. think there's, there's something in it. And it's so like... I mean, I know it's... it's terrifying. It's it? basic, but it's, it's the underground. So you're like, you're going into the depths of where... Yeah. Like, you know? And so much shit has happened. Yeah, exactly. And there. So yeah. Yeah, they've you know what seen I mean? shit. Yeah, Those drivers. Fucking... I know. Oh, um, okay, this is the last one. Yeah. But this is... I quite like this one because it is quite exciting. This happened in 1983 and I think that was when the first one happened. Yeah, it was. So this happened in 1983 as well. Basically, it was this woman, um, a, a customer of the underground. She was showing a family around London, so they went on the Bakerloo line. And obviously, this is the time before mobile phones or anything like that. So she just had a, a disposable amateur camera. And a family were like, can you take a picture of the underground? Because we really want to, like, you know, we want to obviously mm. remember it because they'd never mm -mm. been before. So she took a photo of this um, child uh, on what the Bakerloo line. Just a, ra just a random child who was there. Uh, it was actually. <laughs> Alone. Well. No, yeah. In Victorian <laughs> clothing. <laughs> 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 With red eyes and drool. Um, that just sounds like an old fucking child to me, the little bastard. Um, so she took a picture. Anyway, they go and get the pictures developed. And she gives the they give the pack of pictures to the family and they're and they're going through them and they're like, That's fucking horrible. And she's like, What is? So she looks at the picture and the picture is of this child, right? So he sat on the underground with the window behind him. Mm. And all you can see do you know I'm gonna try and find this photo for you. All you can see in the window is a man sat like that with lightning bolts coming off the chair and it's a it's a man in an elect electric, an electric chair. chair. Let me see if I can find it. For oh you my god! Are you ready for this? <gasps> what the fuck? I've seen it. I've just found it. That's so I mean, so this is interesting because I immediately, when I saw this, thought that's a poster. Yeah, on the other or it's side. so obviously faked because it's yeah. two photographs. Exactly. Yeah. Well, this is the thing, but it is 1983, and a photo expert has looked at it. And has said it is incredibly unlikely that it's been... Is that the same photo expert who said that Prince Andrew wasn't in that photo? <laughs> because if it no, is... It's a, different, it's a different one. <laughs> um, but this, this, this expert was like, I'm not going to rule it out, but it is incredibly unlikely. Mainly because the photo was taken on, on like a shit camera. It was taken on a shit disposable I just, You camera. know when they're like... This photo expert. I know. You know when everyone's a fucking expert? I know. Like, who I know, actually I know, are they? I know. But it does... So anyway, and I thought, no, it's a poster of some kind or a flyer that the kid might be holding. Right. And it's just because, you know, that the windows are a little bit warped. Yeah. So it could, I suppose. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't look like that, but whatever. Anyway, so some more ex some more people did some digging on it. Turns out that the man is a waxwork in Madame Two Swords, right? And the waxwork is of Bruno, what's his name? Bruno Hauptmann. Mm -hmm. In a in a in a in an electric chair, and Bruno Hauptmann was the man who was who was um, convicted of murdering and abducting the Lindenberg baby. Do you know the Lindenberg no. baby story? No. It's basically it was a it was an abduction abduction of a child years and years ago. Um, but look it up anyway, because I don't think I've got time to go into it. Anyway, so. That's that. That was what. That's what it is. When you look at the the picture of the of what's in Madame Two Swords and the picture that was on the tube, they are exactly the same. So it is him. So everyone was like, "Well, obviously it's a poster, it's a flyer." Madame Two Swords have never released a flyer or a poster with Bruno Hauptmann on it. But you can take a photo of him if you go to Madame Two Swords. Yeah. Yeah. So so technically, someone could have taken a photo. Mm. Of this waxwork, yeah, and maybe it was somehow superimposed over this 
Yeah, that but but because of the time and the age, this this is why they're saying. But then you know they did that. Uh, what was it? The Loch Ness. That was a conspiracy. That that wasn't real, was it? Yeah. But then that was also a very. But haven't they been like faking ghost photographs for like hundreds of years? Yeah, like but it's... yeah, but experts can tell. I always experts. Um, but what's also weird creepy. about this? And I mean, this could be a lie because if the woman has done the fa- if the woman has made a hoax, then she will also be lying about this. But anyway, she was telling a friend about it, and a friend said you should go and see a medium. Mm. and see if like you're attached to ghosts and whatever um and she did go and see the medium uh well no sorry her friend went to see the medium she was like i'm not going to see the medium i'm going to come with you the medium came out into the waiting room after and just said to her i have a message from you it's about your photo uh the man said i'm accused of something i didn't do but i did do something else oh my god bruno hartman i think he kind of maintained that he was innocent <gasps> Shit! What else did it's he good fucking though, do? It's good, isn't it? It's good. It's really interesting. Good. It's a lot of fun. But yeah, it does look like it's weird, isn't it? That that's a weird. What do picture. um? What do our listeners have to type in to see that photo? Uh, Bruno Hauptman picture ghosts. So if you want to find him, type in Bruno and then Hauptman H A U P T M A N N. That's a good story though, isn't that's it? A really good. Do you story. like that? It's good. That's creepy as shit. There's so many ghost photos that are like so intriguing. I and you're know, like, but it's it's hard on a podcast to talk about them because unless you, like, I know. Well, we'll attach that photo. In. Well, maybe we'll put it on the pod. Maybe we'll put it on the Instagram. Yeah, really we'll do good, that yeah. uh, because it does look like it could be superimposed. Yeah, but if someone's telling me it's not, but then they could be in on it. Can they? Just might want to. I don't know. I just think that it must be so creepy to like work on the London Underground. You're like you're closing up. You're the last one there, and like that. I really, honestly, that one that you told it. me last week has just really stuck with me. The one about the man, yeah, just on the overall, and then someone saying, "Yeah, you were standing around right there." <gasps> Fuck, I honestly, know. it's such a good story. Though. I know it makes it does make me start questioning whether or not things uh, are real. Oh, yeah, me too. I know. I really, I want them to be real so fucking much. But you know what also makes me think that they're not? Is you know when, like, I, it happened to me last night. Adam was out and I was in the house on my own with, with the dog. Um, we very well behaved. I'd really be happy to know. Um, Sorry? Uh, I was I was just saying that it makes me... <laughs> I was looking at a story. What did it you makes, just say? What <laughs> it makes me It makes me think that things aren't real because last night Adam was out. Yeah. And it was me and Rosie at home on our own. Uh, oh, and I, well, yeah, well, I was just said we were incredibly well behaved. Oh, I see. Uh, yeah, so bit of, bit of you've done that joke already. So I bit of bestiality fun. Uh, yeah, <laughs> why not? Um, and when I say fun, I mean joke, not <laughs> not fun. <laughs> just to make that incredibly clear. Um, and so I was watching. I was watching. I was looking at ghost things online in preparation, and it's. St- I started hearing things that weren't there immediately. You start getting a vibe. You start like, <gasps> what about? And then you're like, no, yeah. I'm being a dickhead. And like, I just. I created this whole environment yeah. for myself that just wasn't. Real. Yeah, you can get yourself into a state where you're like, I, and you start to make patterns when exactly. they're not there, uh, which is called. Cool. Didn't we say there was? There's a word for that. What's Occam's razor? Sorry, have you heard of that? I, I keep... think you just have a stroke. <laughs> What's Occam's razor? Occam's razor. It's Occam's um, razor. It's, it's a new series in the Gillette. No, it's what is it? It's like um. Oh, are you having another pepperami? pepperami? Yeah. I fucking Starving. love a pepperami. What kind of meat is it? It's is it, just good meat. Is it, it pork? I think so. Yeah, nice. Oh, um, the simplest explanation is usually the best one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So it's like that, isn't it? And it, don't they say that for like disappearances and like murders? They're just like, it's usually the husband or, yeah. you know, she's... And it oh, is. Yeah. And like the same with ghosts. It's like the simplest explanation is probably that the ice is pouring out of the fridge. It's not Can we just very wife. quickly touch on the fact that that Polish woman is saying that she's Madeleine McCann. <laughs> no, has but, she done uh, a DNA test? I think they've agreed to one now, haven't they? Oh my god, it is so exciting. Bat shit. It's bat shit. I don't know what to believe. You know, she's not Madeleine McCann. Are you, how, can you say that for sure? Ninety nine point. She's got the. She's got the thing in her eye. So do other people. Yeah, but I've got blue eyes. So does Madeleine think, McCann? What makes you think she definitely isn't? She doesn't look like Madeleine McCann. <laughs> That's what Yeah, and the and the advert that in the in the in the article I was reading, I've been doing a lot of deep dives into this. They were like, well, you can't deny the the likeness. And I was no, like, Well you, you can. can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you fucking can. She doesn't look anything like Madeleine McCann. No. I think you and me look more like Madeleine McCann. I think both of us should do a DNA test. Mm. Oh actually I don't have blonde hair anymore. Oh well. I don't. <laughs> 
So, are you ready for Celebrity Segment? Ah, uh, yeah. We need a jingle for that, don't we? So Ce- We need to think of a name of it as well. Ce- Ce- yeah. Celebrity Hauntings. Celebrity Spirits. Okay. Um, so, Hard, have no? you heard of a singer called Brocard? No. Brocard. I don't know how to say it. Oh, actually. Name. Yeah, she's really witchy. I'm having couples therapy with my ghost husband. Amazing. Um, so, for most people, being ghosted in a relationship is a bad thing, but for Bacard, a haunting led to her getting hitched. <laughs> Very good. Very good. As she made her way up the aisle, singer Bracard, who's got, she's got a blue tick, mate. Shut just like up. you, she's, she's a big deal. She's not just some random mental person. Um, um, we're not going to be allowed to play a, play a clip of a music, are we, on this? I mean, it's like um, I'd listen to that. Yeah, it's very. um, Who's that? Who's that one that did "Bitch"? Oh, um, what was name? Meredith Brooks. Meredith, it's very Meredith Brooks. Sorry, continue. As she made her way up the aisle, singer Brocard smiled at her guests, every inch the blushing bride. But this wasn't your average wedding. The dashing groom at the end of the aisle was, in fact, a 36-year-old ghost named Eduardo. Oh, and their special day on the 31st of October was attended by guests from beyond the grave. Oh, God, of course, it was on fucking Halloween. (laughs) Yeah. Bricard first connected with her spooky soulmate when he visited her one night and told her he loved her. And after almost two years and some otherworldly hanky-panky, the couple decided to tie the knot. But it's not been smooth sailing. Unsurprisingly, a relationship with a ghost has its fair share of complications, which resulted in the newlywed seeking marriage therapy. Ricard says, five years ago, if someone had told me they were married to a ghost, I'd think they were crazy. Yeah, I still do. Yeah, but you can't understand the supernatural until you've experienced it. Our relationship may be turbulent, but the connection I have with Eduardo is nothing like I've ever known. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so she's basically, um, she basically married a ghost. And this is what she says. She says... Uh, the encounters continued when she first um, experienced him. And eventually, Bricard, who lives in Oxfordshire, saw the ghostly figure of a Victorian soldier. She says, I was being sent visions and information. That's how I learned that his name was Eduardo and he was a 35-year-old soldier from the Victorian times. How old is she? Good question. Don't know. Don't know. Maybe the same. And she's put here, he died by falling down a well. Oh, that's shit, isn't it? Yeah, not a great soldier. It's probably all I'm going to go, to be fair. Drowning. <laughs> True. Me and Eduardo will be together yeah. forever and ever. Oh, she'll be very jealous. Um, I can literally feel his touch all over my body. He's given me incredible orgasms and I don't do anything myself to trigger it. So there's no, no frotting for... Yeah, but people can have hard. orgasms without touching themselves, can't well, they? Exactly. Wet dreams. <laughs> um, and we've talked about them enough. So... <laughs> Uh, but in time, Bricard saw another side to Eduardo. She says he can be quite jealous. If I ever lay out a revealing outfit, he'll rip it or hide it and then vanish for a few days. I wouldn't put up with that behaviour from a living man, but the reason I'm so forgiving with Eduardo is that I'm so intrigued and still wonder why I was chosen. He sounds like a fucking twat. Yeah, he's just sounds like a twat. <laughs> just because you're dead. Um, I mean, you can't be a twat. So they got married. Um... Children? <laughs> well, I, I think they. I think she says somewhere that she's expecting. Uh, or she wants to have. She's like, oh, maybe. Oh, I don't know. I don't know what the fuck it says. <laughs> <laughs> Very well researched. <laughs> yeah, hang on. <coughs> um, yeah, she says that Eduardo was mischievous on their special day when he locked eyes with a certain 1950s blonde bombshell. Oh. She explains one of our spirit guests was Hollywood actress Marilyn Monroe. And oh, was she not busy that day? <laughs> I've got a fucking funny feeling that Marilyn Monroe wouldn't be asked about going down to fucking Wiltshire or wherever it is. Oxfordshire. Also, Eduardo was not even like a dead superstar. He's just a dead person. He's a dead soldier in a well. She got married in Peckham. So that makes like the idea of Marilyn oh, Monroe. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Marilyn Monroe in Peckham. Hanging out in Peckham. <laughs> Marilyn, That's can I get you any fish? <laughs> any meats? <laughs> Eduardo made a lewd remark about her and it really got under my skin. I just couldn't understand why he was making comments about another woman on our wedding I don't. I, do you know, I'm still stuck on why the fuck Marilyn Monroe <laughs> would go to a wedding <laughs> bag. I love her just sat there in Peckham like, mm, Yeah, I've, I had nothing else to Have do. Have you got any tapas? Any... Uh, <laughs> 
That's like Harry Crudite. Styles turning up at my christening or something. <laughs> yeah. You're christening? I mean. When are you getting christened? I've been christened like six times. Have you? Yeah, loads. Are you quite religious? No, not at all. Wow. I just didn't expect Mama, I think that. it was for the pictures and the party, really. Really? Like, I got christened on my own. Then I got christened with my sister. Then I got christened with my sister and my brother. No. Yeah. I, is your family quite religious? No. So why the christening? I mean, my nan is to a, to the point, you know, like where all older people are like, well, fuck it, may as well yeah, be religious yeah, just in yeah, case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't know. She's not like my parents are religious at all. But love a christening. Yeah, apparently Six they love time. a christening. Well, there you go. Um, what else? I was going to say something else. Um, oh, apparently Brocard... Uh, went on this morning with Holly and Phil. Stop it. Yeah, and as she began her interview, she shrieked suddenly, causing Holly Willoughby, who was dressed as Wednesday Adams, to jump. Um, and she shouted, he's here. <gasps> so apparently Eduardo uh, was on this morning. Do you know what I'd like? Bricardo, if you're... Bricardo? Is that a name? Bricard. Sorry, Bricard. Bricardo. I'm thinking of, I'm thinking of that's Bricardo. Their, that's their couple name. <laughs> I'm thinking of Bricardo. Bricard, if you're listening, we would very much like you to come on the podcast. So if you do want to come on, yeah. hit us up because that would be a very... If she can bring Eduardo... Yeah, I don't really want a son's Eduardo. She said to um, Phil that Eduardo doesn't like you. Oh, fuck. <laughs> which I think is fucking great. It's harsh, isn't it? To which the presenter replied, well, that's fair enough. I'm not marrying him. Sass. Yeah, sassy. sassy great. Sassy well. Film. So um, there you go. Uh, a lovely little celeb segment. I enjoyed that. Thank you no very much. Heard of, but there you go. Lovely. Uh, good luck to him. Uh, good luck to Bricca him. Bricardo. Yeah, Bricardo. Bricardo. <laughs> Bricardo. Yo, Acado. She's turned into me. I oh You're my You're doing God. shit accents. Um, would you like to uh, go on to our segment of We Get Haunted so you don't have to? Yes, please. Um, okay, what so. What are doing? What we are doing, what you're doing. <laughs> you are. <laughs> oh, no. Um, okay, so this this could be bad for a couple of things, <laughs> a couple of reasons. Um, okay. First of all, we need a mirror, which we never, ever have. So oh. I think you should use your phone. So just turn, like, to put the self camera on and just rest it against your bottle here. Okay. I mean, it's very on brand for us, isn't it, not to have anything we need. Mm -hmm. Last week we did use, was it before we used a tampon and a pencil uh, okay. to do it. Just do um, This one is, you're going to be fucking raging when you hear the name of this. This one's called Baby Blues. Baby Blues? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to. You could end up with a baby. Like now. Like you might walk out of this pod box with a baby. <laughs> I but don't want a baby. Possible. Well, I mean, you know, you, you, are you dedicated to the potty or not? <laughs> For fuck's sake. Because I'm the having... seven of carrots says <laughs> that you are, you've committed to this. They're pentacles. Seven of pentacles. Seven of octagons. <laughs> seven of seven, carrots. Seven of squids. Whatever the <laughs> fucking hell it is. All right. I'll okay, commit. you ready? Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, can we turn the lights down, please, Bonnie? We need Atmos. Fair, please. Okay, just so you know, I'm I'm recording this, so uh, we're just doing just doing our. Maybe we'll put this on. Maybe we'll put this on the thing. That's a good idea. Yeah. Here we are. Uh, I'm about to get. I'm about to get haunted. Uh, so, so you the don't have to. Don't have to. Yeah, we really are committed to the bit here. Here we are. Hello. Um. Okay, so fold your arms like you might be cradling a tiny baby. Oh, That's very. <laughs> That's it. That's that's perfect. That's horrible. That's textbook. Baby blue. That is. Um, so uh, an infant that just uh, this might be a demon spawn. Just so you know. <laughs> what you have to do is say baby blue thirteen times, right? With no listen, with your eyes closed, and then you suppose. But I need you to really get. In, I need you to really get in the mood. I need you to really, no, don't be a dickhead. No, put the pepper army down. <laughs> Come on. Cradle it. That's, I'll, I'll cradle a pepper army any day of the week. Um, okay, so I need you to really just close your eyes, empty your head, and say baby blue 13 times. At this point, you should start to feel something take shape. So you can have a little break after saying baby blue 13 times. But then after, I need you to just keep saying baby blue until you feel it growing and squirming, clawing at your arms. Horrible. And what will happen is when you feel like you're ready, you'll open your eyes and you'll see a reflection of a hideous woman looking back at you, snarling with evil bloodshot eyes that seem intent on killing you where you stand. That's nice, isn't it? Um, and sometimes she will even scream, give me back my baby. <laughs> give me back my baby. <laughs> eh, 
<laughs> yeah, because she's Mrs. Doubtfire. <laughs> Give me back my baby! <laughs> Fat bastard again! <laughs> okay, focus, guys. Serious! Come on! Okay. okay. So when you're ready, say baby blue 13 times. Baby blue. No! <laughs> <laughs> Properly. Okay, fine. Like, really atmospheric, please. Really atmospheric, please. <laughs> That's what a dick has. Baby blue. Baby. Um, can you count? Yeah. Good for you. <laughs> just, what, what, the fuck's <laughs> what the fuck's happened to this prick today? <laughs> How many? Okay, I've got to do 20. 30, 30, yeah. No, well, no, you're going to start again now. Okay. Baby blue. Baby blue. Baby blue. Baby blue. Get me back, my baby! fucking hell! <laughs> Why are you such a piece ah, of shit? I'm so... <laughs> Sorry, so sorry. You're the demon, no, I, no, I couldn't help. I couldn't help it. Do it again properly. I couldn't help it. It was too funny. Also, you absolutely shit yourself. <laughs> Can okay. we have a level of trust him? Yeah, I'm not gonna do it again. <clears throat> Maybe. Um, no, I'm not. Ready? Start again. Baby blue. 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 Baby blue, baby blue, baby blue, baby blue. What do I do? You're just supposed to stay there and just feel there. Can you feel a baby in your arms? <laughs> no, I, I don't know. Ah! <laughs> Fucking <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> Should have known that was going to happen. I can't wait to watch that back on that video. That is so funny. Okay. <laughs> Didn't work. As usual. This is called uh, a last story to end the pod with a haunting in Hampshire. Oh. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> 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 uh. I like them when they're set in England. Yeah, I do as well. It's very, well, England is very, uh, very, it's very atmospheric. Because there's a lot of American stories, and I don't have anything against America, but oh I God. just, I do like it. You know, Brexit means Brexit. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's absolutely staying in. Loved it. <laughs> Listen, before I moved to London, I used to live in a 1950s built house in Hampshire, dash UK. My parents purchased it ninety nine. Sound like an ice cream man. <laughs> ninety nine. Stop <laughs> the fucking accents. I didn't do an accent. I just said ninety nine. Right, 99. come on, we're running out of time. My parents had purchased it in ninety nine from an old couple who had lived in it since it was built, so no one had died in it. The first strange thing that happened was the cats wouldn't stay in the house. They would always bolt out for some reason. After my parents started renovating, my brother and I both started to feel like we were being watched in the house and at night in the living room. You would always feel like something was watching you through the new glass doors from the hallway or the stairs. After a while, if we were sitting downstairs, we started to hear footsteps moving from my bedroom in the room above, walking to my brother's neighbouring room then across the landing to the hallway to my parents' room. My parents both dismissed it as the pipes cooling or the floorboards settling, but you could distinctly tell exactly what boards the footsteps were treading on. At one point, friends came over, I was alone. What? That makes absolutely no sense, you silly bastard. <laughs> At one point, friends came over and I was alone. <laughs> oh yeah, that doesn't make any sense, I didn't even realise. Okay, we don't have time for me to start whining into the mic, so <laughs> let's carry on. At one point, something happened. As you walked down the street, you could see into our living room. They asked if I had relatives staying, as they had seen people sitting on the sofa. Things started to move. You'd place shoes by the door, and then they'd be under the stairs, or things like keys would be moved somewhere else. Then it gets really creepy. One day, I'd run a bath, and I was listening to some music on the computer in the study in the next room. It had been a while and the music had stopped as the PC had gone into standby mode. Terrifying. <laughs> I had been in the bath about an hour 
and fell asleep. Oh, they've done what you've done. What? Fell asleep? Yeah. It's fucking, listen, it happens all the time. And as the water had just gone past my nose, the music on the PC shot back on louder and woke me up. Bearing in mind in those days you had to mash the keyboard or really jiggle the mouse to wake the computer up, saving me from potentially drowning. I took this to be whatever was in the house wasn't bad. However... Also, you're not going to drown. You will wake up when you're drowning. So. Well, yeah, exactly. If you're like... Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's get the shit out of <laughs> I got my revenge. <laughs> However, a few weeks later, I woke up bolt upright like something had woken me up. It must have been around 2 a.m. <clears throat> my door was open to the landing and it was a bright full moon night shining through the hallway onto the brick landing. I looked and to my terror, I saw an old man, but he wasn't standing up. It was like he was lying down on the stairs and his head was at foot height, staring around the landing Oh, wall, vile! Directly at me. The moonlight was on his face and it haunts me to this oh, day. Oh, that's vile. I closed the door and slept with my light on for the rest of the night. My parents sold the house in 2004 when they moved to New Zealand and when I spoke to my dad about it later, he said he knew something was in the house but hadn't wanted to scare my brother and I. He'd had his own experiences. He'd heard the same footsteps on the floorboards and in the mornings when he'd get up and make tea for mum, he'd hear footsteps behind him in the kitchen walking towards him. Years later, when I told him about the old man I'd seen, he said on a few occasions he'd been in the lounge at night and in the reflection of his reading glasses, he could see the exact same man Uh, sitting in the armchair behind uh, him. My dad is a massive sceptic, a policeman back in the day and a no-nonsense project director. Apparently he was so freaked out, he went to the public records office to see what our house had been built on. The area had been made up of an old mansion um, back in the Victorian times and it looked like our kitchen had been built over a pathway leading from the old big house to an ice house outbuilding. He thinks that maybe it was the servants or whoever walked that path. Very spooky. Very, that is spooky. I don't like that at all. Well, thank you for that story. That was lovely. No problem. Um, what a great, great episode. Thank you so much for joining us for this week's yeah. Ghost Hons. Um, we'll see you at Stress and Space Project. Come and watch me and Susie tell some drugs. Yes, yeah, um, you And we'll, if you don't come to that, because you don't live in the fucking country, uh, we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.